Hi guys, Mr. Fijio here in Australia. Today I'm going to talk about golfer's elbow gain. Actually, I've covered this topic before, but there are a lot more to discuss and more exercises to show you. People then ask me, I've suffered for many years. Is there any hope? According to this study, yes, there is. They found more healthy tissues in degenerated tendons than non-symptomatic tendons. Again, they found more good tissues in sore tendons than healthy tendons. This is the chart where they compared normal tendons with pathological tendons. You can see there are more good tissues in pathological tendons than normal tendons. They say pathological tendons have more ability to adapt to the loading. So we need to give them the loading because these good tissues are waiting for us to load. So you don't need to be scared. You don't need to be frightened by the MRI showing you some degenerative changes or partial tear, whatever. So what I always tell my patients is this. No matter what you do, your degenerated tendon cannot be repaired. But you've got plenty of good tissues you can work with. So don't lose your hope. But I don't recommend stretching because it has started from the stretching force applied to the tendon. So you can't really control the stretching force at the moment. That's why it gets sore. So if you keep stretching out without your tendon being able to control that stretching force, it can make it worse. Instead, we're going to loosen up your muscle first and then do some eccentric exercises we discussed in the last video. And also when you do massage, you don't want to do massage around that bony area because the tendon's hooked around the bony area like that. If you compress on the tendon, that's the same as rubbing this rubber band around that hard structure like a rock. So we're gonna loosen up this middle part, muscle belly first. First of all, try to find a painful area or tight area like that. Normally right next to the bone, this is the bone, right next to it, that's quite tight. So you hold on to the muscle and do some activities that has been painful for you, like gripping something hard, that kind of thing can be pain-free if you hold on to the right muscle. So if this is the right muscle or painful muscle, and if you press down onto that and do like a painful activities, it can be pain-free. Not all the time, but most cases, uh, it can reduce the pain, which means your muscle tension definitely contributes to that tendon problem. When you do the massage, you don't want to touch around the bony area again, maybe five centimeters away from the elbow and massage the middle muscles here. Okay, so about 10 centimeters in the middle of your forearm. So you can go across like that for about 30 seconds and then press down onto the muscle and just do this kind of flexion and extension of the wrist for about 30 seconds. And you can actually you know, do a few spots, five to 10 seconds here, five to 10 seconds there, or going down as well. Try to do the massage on the whole forearm muscle but do more on the tighter spots. You can also do it with some tool, something like this stick. I use my highlighter. So you can use any tool to apply the pressure. You start with gentle pressure, but as you get used to it, you try to push a little bit harder and harder. So 30 seconds of massage and another 30 seconds of massage and uh, wrist movement. And the exercise I showed you in the previous golfer's elbow video is this one. You try to pull towards you with your right hand and push away, push it away with your left hand like that. While right hand keep pushing towards me like that. So when you do that, your right forearm muscles contracted because you try to pull towards you, but you forcefully lengthening that right forearm muscle using left hand so that your muscle can be lengthened or the tendon can be lengthened under this kind of loading so once you can do that with your elbow bent you can go you know with elbow straight like this so push and try to resist through that right hand and straighten up your elbow. A lot of people ask me, uh, isn't it the same as stretching? 
but it's not. There's a huge difference because one exercise, this exercise, has muscle contraction and tendons controlling the loading. But if you do that, just a stretching for 30 seconds like that, there's no muscle contraction, tendons not working, and it's not effective. And it is proven by many studies like this one, tendon stiffness can be reduced significantly with eccentric contraction, whereas there was no change after static stretching. So you do this exercise with the tendon rehab principle applied. Your pain level should be below 4 out of 10. And if you can do 3 sets of 15 twice a day, now that means you can actually progress on to next level. This is a really good exercise, pretty easy and you can do it anywhere or uh, anytime. But the problem with this exercise is uh, you don't know how much weight you are putting on. So it's hard to progress and hard to regress. That's why you can use um, dumbbell as well. Since I'm holding on to weight, my muscle is contracted at the moment. But from there, if I lower the weight, my whole muscle length will be elongated. So going up, my muscle is contracted. And from there, the whole muscle length will be elongated. That's the tendon doing most of the job. And then last exercise is this one. Start from here like this and going out to the side. Lower down and come back up and lower down. It's exactly the opposite movement to the exercise I showed you in tennis elbow. Going down in three to five seconds. At the beginning of tendon rehabilitation, the slower movement is better and light weight is better. So once you can do these two actions, going down and rotating down like that, you can apply these two movements into one action. It's similar to biceps curl and I will tell you why later. Okay, so start from this position and going down and rotating out. As you do that, you try to straighten your arm. So you try to go up with the other hand because we don't want the shortening phase of the exercises at the beginning. Going up and slowly lower down in about 5 seconds. So end position, your hand will be like that. So almost like rotating out to the side, dropping the weight like this. So that, that will be stretched out on the loading. You can actually do it to the front rather than down like that. It's, it's the same thing. So going forward and rotating out to the side like that. So palm away from you that way. So going down like that. And coming up and going down. The reason why it is similar to biceps curl is your forearm muscles are actually two joint muscle. That means they run through two joints, the elbow and the wrist joints. So they start above the elbow and run through elbow and wrist joint and attach on your fingers. So normally when they contract, they bend your wrist. But if your wrist is fixed like this, maybe holding on to weight, something like that. So when your wrist is fixed like this and you're doing biceps curl or triceps curl, your forearm muscles can be used in that action. For example, okay, let's say I'm doing a rowing action with a barbell. Let's say this is 10 kilograms. So when I grip the barbell really hard, my muscle, forearm muscles is contracted. But since it is two jointed muscles, it's actually attached above the elbow joint. So when, you, when I bend my elbow, this muscle is shortened and when I release the barbell, this muscle will be lengthened. So I'm already contracting my muscle and then I do, when I do that, my muscle is shortening and then when I release the barbell slowly, lower down, this muscle, forearm muscles, will be stretched out again. The forearm muscle is normally doing this kind of action but since my wrist is fixed due to the barbell weight, now when I do this action, this muscle will be shortened because it is attached above the elbow. And when I lower the barbell, that muscle will be stretched out, which is eccentric control. So the muscle is contracted while being elongated. That's why there are some people getting better with this kind of weight training that involves grip strength and arm extension and flexion. So it can be barbell row, it can be biceps curl, it can be you know triceps exercises. 
anything that involves grip strength, like gripping something, dumbbell hard. So the dumbbell should be a little bit heavier than normal eccentric exercises, light training exercises. So my recommendation is this. Do this eccentric exercise with light weight first, 1 kilo, 2 kilo, 3 kilo, maybe 3 sets of 15 twice a day. If you can do them without any problem, you can move on to you know, weight training. And there is evidence, slow heavy resistance training is as effective as eccentric exercises. So as long as you have eccentric components in your exercises, that exercise can be effective. Plus, you need to work on sports specific activities depending on your goal. If you're a golfer, you need to work on your speed. If you're a weightlifter, you need to work on your, you know, loading, heavy loading. So I hope this video helps. I'll see you next time.